So imposter syndrome is this feeling that you're not supposed to be in the place that you are. For me as a doctor, it might be the feeling that I am not supposed to be trusted with patients' lives. If you're someone that's a YouTuber, it might be this feeling that who are you to talk about, you know, certain things. And imposter syndrome is like super duper duper common. So I just want to talk a little bit about it and some of my experiences with it and also some of the ways that I had dealt with it myself. Imposter syndrome is something that's really, really universal. I know that amongst Many of my friends who were medical students and are now doctors, they didn't always start off with the confidence that they have now. When I was in medical school, for example, I felt that I was actually not the greatest medical student. And as a doctor, I felt like, especially in the early years, that I wasn't the greatest doctor either. I felt that a lot of the time, even though I actually got pretty good grades, I just had this fear that like one day when I take care of patients, because I'm gonna make a mistake, my patients are actually gonna die. That really weighed on my mind. That thought got extremely exacerbated when one day I was working in the emergency department, I patient came in with something that could have easily been mistaken for something else and I did mistake it for the other thing. I actually made a misdiagnosis that day. That patient ended up actually passing away. Um, to be honest, that patient probably would have passed away anyway because of the thing that they actually had. But at the same time, that was really heavy on my mind. There were people that were supportive around me, but there was one senior doctor that was like, you should never do emergency medicine. That was like really devastating. I got set back so far because of that experience. I still continue to be a doctor anyway. This was pretty much my first year of medicine. And like now I've been practicing as a doctor for five years and I did come across like a lot of little bumps on the way. For example, I was a bit slower on the surgical wards because I often tended to take a lot of time with things. I would talk to other senior doctors and they'd sometimes be very harsh if I didn't quite get exactly the right things done. Over time, now I'm doing general practice, right? The things that perhaps were a deficit before uh, have become a bit of an asset now. So for example, when I was bad at stuff, it felt a lot of pain at the time. You can actually improve on those things that you know give you the pain and then you actually become better. I remember I had one ED physician, for example. She's a top-notch ED physician. She's someone that like gets everything extremely thorough. I had a lot of respect for her, but she was scary <laughs> and so at the start of the rotation I was like oh man like you know I'm really slow I'm not seeing enough patients I'm not really doing as much as I could and so she really picked me up on it she was like you really need to start cracking on it was hard like I worked really hard and in the end like after probably about six months I got an email from her and she was like you've really improved like quite a lot and like that was something that was like so special to me like I remember seeing that and like really like glowing that day because you know those pains are the places that you can improve on. Over time there's things that like for example being slow and I'm still slow and I'm still very thorough with my patients but what ends up happening is that the patients that I have now in general practice they actually really like that sort of treatment. They like doctors that uh, can explain things thoroughly that actually take the time to listen to them. Something that I thought was such a, a flaw in my mind has become now a really great asset. Imposter syndrome comes from this discrepancy between who you feel like you should be and who you feel like you are. That discrepancy is the thing that causes the conflict and the tension that makes you feel like you shouldn't be in the position that you're in. If you change who you think you should be, then I think that that makes the biggest difference. You know, you should still be a good doctor if you're doing being medical school and uh, trying to do medicine. But what does a good doctor actually mean? What is a good whatever you're trying to do actually mean for you? If it is something that is a skill discrepancy, well, fortunately, you just identify them and then you go and work on them. If it's something where the parameters are very fuzzy, so for example, what does it mean to be a good parent? I think that a lot of that can be defined by you and defined by perhaps the things you read or the people that you respect and then just try to work towards those things you know a lot of the things that are in your mind are still your definitions <laughs> so uh, you know what does it mean to be a good youtuber for example do you have to be super duper intelligent as this other youtuber or do you have to have like incredible video quality probably it's funny or it's personable as whoever else your aspirational identity is what you actually make of it and I think that if you find that you can therefore be comfortable to experiment I think that the best artists for example and the best musicians that I know they they work very hard at their craft, but at the same time, like when you look at someone like Jacob Collier as a really good example, he makes music for the fun of it. The soul in his music comes from the fact that when he's in that world, he's very much playing in that world. But similarly, for whatever you want to do, just have fun with it. Like try to experiment a bit more, try to push your comfort zone and push the limits of what you can do. But you can do that without all the, the tension and that conflict that comes with having to be this person and you are this person, you know? In the end, you're gonna be working towards it. You're gonna be progressing anyway.
way. So you might as well do it without all the heavy burden of life's troubles on your back. Again, being a doctor for five years, very soon graduating from my general practice fellowship, I'm actually much happier with you know the way that I practice now. Sometimes bad things will happen even if you do your absolute best. That's just a part of life. You're just a human. Don't worry. Don't sweat the, the small stuff. In the end, the amount of good that you bring to the world fundamentally heavily outweighs whatever negative you bring into the world. For medical students and for doctors in particular, people are afflicted by diseases and you just happen to be an observer of someone that is afflicted by a disease, right? And you happen to have the medical degree and you've seen them. Them getting sick is not your fault and you can maybe do something to fix them. If you do feel like you're out of your depth, just ask for help. There are people that are really smart around you. To sort of summarize, Imposter syndrome is something that is related to a conflict between who you want to be and who you are. And the way to resolve imposter syndrome is simply to resolve that conflict. Who you want to be is quite malleable. And if it isn't malleable, then you can actually work towards becoming that person. Don't worry too much about who you are right at this second. Just worry about your trajectory. We all get there eventually. Sometimes it takes a longer time, but don't worry about it too much because we all end up dying anyway. <laughs> With that positive note, I'm going to uh, conclude the video right there. <laughs> Thanks.